Show me something. Hello and welcome back to the Show Me Something podcast. I'm Will. I'm Trevor. And I'm Jacob. And this week I have brought MF Doom back to the podcast and I'm showing the boys the album Mmm Food from 2004. Uh, this was kind of fast-tracked in light of the news that Doom passed away October 31st of last year. It was announced by his wife on Instagram on New Year's Eve, uh, two months after the fact, true to his elusive and villainous style. Uh, the world didn't know that he had been dead for two months. Um, he was 49. No cause of death or anything has been announced, um, but much love to him and his family. Uh, yeah. A gigantic rest in peace. Uh, a very, very sad, sad thing. Very sad. Um, so we will dive into that shortly. But in the meantime, how are you guys? Any housekeeping? What's been going on? Well, I guess biggest housekeeping is for our YouTube people. I'm sure you've noticed. We're in video. <laughs> yeah, we have video. <laughs> we have video now. If everything goes correctly, you will have seen yeah. it um, already. If you're also a NedPod listener, you have seen it uh first in ned pod when we were trying it out me and kirk um and then this one will be coming up next right after it so this will be the first show me something video going up exciting oh, yeah. very times. exciting yeah we're very nerve-wracking trying new <laughs> things you know and yeah, trying trying to make uh the youtube audience a little bit happier because they just have to stare at a thumbnail for like an hour yeah instead of just doing that and putting in a different tab yeah um cool uh hope you're both well everything is pretty good doing pretty good uh, should we dive right in well, what, uh, are you, what are you guys drinking anything fun well ahead, oh me first okay i am having jingle zombie apocalypse uh <laughs> from what is this king's, king's county, county brewing, brewing collective in brooklyn it is bc yeah it's pretty good it's it's nice and purple is that purple? Look at that oh. glass, beautiful glass. That's pretty. Thank you. Yeah, like my glass. my it looks crystal red beer. On my end. I'm colorblind. I can't tell. <laughs> yeah. it looks red to me too. Yeah. It's red then. It's but it's, <laughs> it's. I can see some purple undertones, maybe. Yeah, it's a deep red. It's yeah. A deep red. Uh, um. Yeah, but that's what I'm drinking. Well. Cool. Yeah, I've got a uh, Cigar City Fancy Papers. Uh, it's a new hazy IPA, uh, true to form for me. Um, shout out to local beers, Tampa. Yeah. And uh, it looks like this. I've got my Delirium Tremens tulip glass with little pink elephants on there. I like that Shout glass. Out to our video people. That's yes. a nice glass. So it's a classic. I made a Moscow mule. Um, <laughs> Hell yeah. Shout out St. Pete Distillery. Uh, it's the Banyan Very Reserve much. vodka and the Very Fever much, Tree so. um, uh, ginger beer. It's Very cool. Excellent. Yeah, it's very good. Cool. So a little album background before we jump into reviews. Uh, this came out in November 2004 on Rhyme Sayers Entertainment. This was released eight months after Mad Villainy, uh, an album which we've previously spoken about on this podcast. That's some quick turnaround. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, eight months after that. So his, I don't know if it's consensus, his one of his best albums, but for me it is. Um, so in the same year, he dropped two unbelievable albums. Uh, this was also a year before his next album which was the mouse and the mask and that's a collaboration with danger mouse who we just spoke about last week uh who produced a lot of the black keys albums yeah. so before he started working with the black keys he worked with doom and other rappers um that was also a collaboration with adult swim so there's a lot of like Damn. uh early 2000s adult swim characters featured on that album in skits uh, as he loves his skits uh, there's, a the the there's a lot of skits in this album. There's a lot of skits in this album. Yeah, the whole middle of the album is one big skit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And we'll get into that. Um, so I went and re-listened to our Mad Villainy episode, uh, as it was both one of our earlier ones and one of my there. sloppiest ones personally. <laughs> um, it was very funny. long. Um, Wasn't that it, was yeah. that the first episode we recorded uh, in the uh, when we were quarantined away from each other? I think it might have been. Yeah, it was at um, least one of the first ones because I remember doing the video call and we took the picture of you holding the album up in your old yeah. apartment. Yeah, and now I can hold the album up in my new apartment. There it is. Great transition. Yeah, Almost um, <laughs> you don't have to take a photo. It's just in video now. <laughs> oh yeah, I should. You're right. Um, so yeah, I was uh, quite drunk 
and very effusive in my praise. I spent the majority of that podcast uh, just reciting lyrics to this al- to that album. Uh, Abby had to cut a lot of it out. She, she spared the listeners, <laughs> spared the listeners my ramblings. Uh, so I have a very big note at the top of my notes to not do that this time. Uh, sorry again, Abby, for that. I also will try to be less rambly and ridiculous. Uh, I'm not as drunk as I was then, so yeah, uh, that's good. Um, yeah, cool. What'd you guys think? Okay, so I liked this one a bit more than the last one. Uh, I really Mad Villainy. Yeah, than uh, Mad Villainy. Uh, this was this was kind of cool. This also though had a song that I disliked more. Like I had like I had an actual dislike of it as opposed to oh, like on, on Mad Villainy that none of them really stood out that I remember that I disliked. I was just kind of like not my thing for most of them. Mm-hmm. One song on this I legitimately disliked. Um but I also had songs on here that I liked more than I liked on any other uh on, on the Mad Villainy stuff. Uh I also really appreciated I don't know, just like the this one had like a lot more skits, and I kind of like the skits. Honestly, I like the the use of the old Spider Man in Fantastic Four cartoon audio. Uh, that was really cool. the The Doom's origin, like not just the rapper, I'm talking like the actual Marvel character Doom, uh, is really interesting, and he's a really cool villain who has a like a very interesting stuff about him like i haven't read a lot of comics but i know a pretty good amount about amount about him wow i can't talk today uh so i really liked them going into like the actual backstory some of the other stuff was just weird but i really liked it like uh what was it i think it was maybe deep fried friends Mm-hmm. Or maybe it was a different song, but it had just some really weird stuff going on with it, and I was like, okay, I'm liking this. I'm liking how like strange some of this is getting. Uh, overall, though, because I'll wait till we start going song by song a little bit more before I get too deep in some of the stuff. But I give this uh, five and a half, six out of ten. It was it was pretty good. Uh, Better than a five. Yeah, I gave a five just, on the. I, just I had barely. to. I had to look it up. I had to I look it up. I thought it was up. gonna be higher, man. You were talking it up. I thought it was gonna be higher than a five and a half. I like. I, I figured. To be fair, like I said on the last one, this is not an album. Like I appreciate what he's done. I appreciate his like craft. I guess you could call it. Like mm-hmm. I guess that's what you would call it. Uh, but it's not my kind of. It's not my kind of music. It's not what I'm. What I'm yeah. into. So I'm not going to go back and listen to it on my own again. But for what it is, I thought it was good. (laughs) Six out of ten. I'll take it. (laughs) Right on. Um, So, I I mean, I have different feelings towards the album than Trevor did. (laughs) Um, Of course, yeah. uh, I I thought the album was was really solid. I thought it was a great album. Um, For me, this album in full is is a... a better like complete album than than mad villainy i feel like on mad villainy i i was like the opposite of trevor like i liked specific songs a lot on mad villainy and on this one i like the whole album like as a, as a full listen um and i feel like i could definitely see myself coming back to this album more often to listen to it in its entirety than i do with mad villainy where i still go back to mad villainy now but I'm only really trying to listen to like clumps of songs. Like I'll listen to like the last like five tracks on Mad Villainy, or like mm-hmm. listen to like Accordion or something like that. Um, but I mean, yeah, this was a really really solid fun album. It, it was a it was a good time. The the skits are really fun. They're funny. Uh, the way they mixed them together for some of the characters sometimes to say just ridiculous things as a response to each other. Um, it's it's cool to hear some of doom's origin and i like to believe that it's doom the rapper's origin and not uh doom the the uh cartoon character um i don't care where he sampled it from <laughs> this is <laughs> i'm talking about the rapper dude he melted his face and fucking had to put on the iron mask um but uh yeah no it was a good time uh there were some really solid tracks on there and some really 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 good beats um and i would probably give it like uh, like a seven and a half, eight, uh, around there, around, around there. 
pretty cool. similar, I think, to where I gave Mad Villainy. Um, I yeah, think because you gave it an eight. I think because on this one I didn't have songs on it where I was like, man, that is like a fucking like absolute standout slapper of a track, like like on on the other album but mm-hmm. this album altogether is really good it's kind of different i'm like confused in my mind where i want to go with it you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah for sure um so yeah i alluded to bringing this album to the podcast uh when we talked about mad villainy one of the things trevor like pinpointed during that record was that he liked a lot of the sample based stuff um and like it was cool to hear you know superhero comic snippets and stuff like that uh there's that times 10 on this album so um, much of that we've already kind of, i loved it <laughs> we've already spoken <laughs> about uh so i i mentioned that i was going to bring another doom album on that pod and this is what i was talking about uh i agree i think this is a really fun listen it's so different tonally to mad villainy mm-hmm. um and i think a lot of that has to do with the fact that doom is the producer on this one uh for the majority of the album He's got a much more playful production style than Mad Lib has. Uh, it's a lot less dark. Um, it's also, I mean, it's absurd. There's a six-minute vocal inter, like a skit interlude in the middle of the album. Um, it's insane. There's yeah, four <laughs> four tracks back to back. Yeah, it's uh, poo putt platter, fillet a rapper, gumbo, and fig leaf by Carbonate. Uh, six, seven, eight, nine on the track listing are purely skits um but some really like, great beats underneath. oh yeah. yeah and that's i think that's one of the things that i think sets it apart is that a lot of times on rap albums skits can be really tiresome um yeah and overindulgent and big take away skip from the album the Lil jimmy skit big skip that's <laughs> oh you're crazy i love Lil jimmy <laughs> Lil jimmy where are you going Lil i will jimmy. say <laughs> I will say, I can say all those skits by heart. Skits are something very new to me. I have never um, been dude, a part is, of a, a, a musical genre that yeah. has skits involved in it. And the way, like, yeah. I didn't realize you guys, now that you guys are talking about it like this, I'm like, so other people do this? Like, it's not just oh, yeah. him? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wow. Kanye usually, I, I feel like usually people won't do the skits, though, as pure samples mashed together. A yeah. lot of the time, it's like newly recorded, like, this is a skit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And I think that's also, like, a lot of times it'll be labeled as skit in the track listing, whereas yeah. these are just labeled as songs. And I think a lot of it comes from the fact that he makes beats, and a lot of his beats just tend to use these vocal snippets and tracks. Um, because, like Cobb mentioned, the beats that are under some of those skits are really good uh, and would be awesome by themselves and can be found by themselves on Doom's instrumental stuff, the Special oh, Herb tight. series. Um, so they're in there somewhere. But, yeah, I think it's, I mean, I think when we talked about Mad Villainy, I probably said Mad Villainy was my favorite Doom album. But since he, since we found out that he died, I've obviously listened to all of his stuff a lot. Uh, he's a really important person, uh, artist to me as I spoke about at great length in the first record, <laughs> um, you know, my first rap concert, I've been living with his music since I was in middle school and early high school. So it's been a long time uh, that he's been a part of my life. And it was obviously a devastating thing to find out that he passed, uh, especially because he hasn't really made a ton of music in the last decade. Um, there were only sporadic appearances by him and uh, it sucks. So I sp- I've spent a lot of time in the last month with his whole discography and this is really, I think it's just the easiest one to listen to front to back. I think it's so consistent. Um, even despite yeah. the fact that the whole middle of the album isn't him rapping, it's still really good. Um, there isn't, there's one track that I could maybe say is weak, but I don't think it's really either fair to call it weak. And we'll, we can talk, talk about that when we get I'm curious tracks, if but... that's the same song that I, that I think is, is uh, yeah. a weak I'm curious if it's say... the same song that I hated. It well, not probably hate, is. disliked. It probably is, but we. I mean, we'll see. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a ten out of ten. I think it's it's his most fun album. It's his most accessible album, and those two things don't come at uh, the cost of how incredible his lyrics are or how great his beats are. I think it's really just like the perfect package, uh, and it's a great concept album. I mean, he concept albums are kind of a lost art in hip hop. There's one that I have in mind to bring. At some point on this podcast, um, it's a thing that happened a lot in the 90s. 
uh, where there yeah. will be like a, a consistent theme throughout the entire album, front to back. Um, and, I did like know, that. It's as absurd as it is. Like he uses food in really fun and creative ways in terms of the metaphors on this album. So um, yeah, I mean, I, I love it to death. Ten out of ten. I've listened to it probably twenty times this week. Like it's pretty wow. much all I've listened to since late last week. I just if I put on music, it's this album. I just have it on on loop. Um, so cool. Let's uh, hit some favorite tracks, Trev. Okay. okay. Uh, oh, also, Trevor, how many times did you listen to it? Because I forgot I got, to say. As well. I got, oh, yeah, sorry. I got four out of this one. It was, you're right, it was easier to listen to this one for me than Mad Villainy just because it, it does have a consistent through line, and I appreciate yeah. the consistency with, like, a story yeah. almost. I love a story. I'll, it's very I'm, dynamic, too. Yeah, exactly. And it's just interesting. So it was a lot easier for me to go... Yeah, okay, I'll put it on again and give it another go. Uh, yeah. I did take all my notes on it last night. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just put in my headphones because I've been listening to it in my car mostly when I'm driving to it yeah. because the length Same. of it, I can pretty much get to work, like almost mm-hmm. all the way to work before it's done. Yeah. Uh, so that's nice that it's just like a one-way trip kind of thing. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think I got four, yeah, I got four listens out of it. It was cool. Yeah. Yeah, I listened to it, I think, six times. Um, also, mostly to and from work. Um, mm. I'd get about halfway through the album, and it would be like uh, on one of the skit songs, and then uh, and then I would start there when I when I was on my way home. Uh, I did yeah. listen to it one of the times uh, in full, just, just listening to it, not doing anything else when I was uh, on my computer at home. That was mm-hmm. when I was taking notes, because I didn't take notes any yeah. other time, and I wanted to remember some of the stuff. Yeah, and I knew we had to make a list, so <laughs> yeah, gotta do it. List king. But yeah, go ahead, Trave. Uh, so this is kind of like I know on the first one I said uh, on Mad Villainy I said that my list of songs was not in any particular order. This mm. is kind of in a particular order. Cool. Like it's more or less ranked from like best to least or whatever. You uh, said yours mm-hmm. weren't in Mad Villainy in a particular order? Yeah, yeah. Apparently I said that. I don't remember saying that, but when I listened back, apparently I said that. <laughs> I feel like you say that a good amount you of did. times with your list. Uh, this one, it's kind of in an order, but like depending on my mood, it could switch around and stuff. Okay. Uh, one beer. It's a really fun intro. The backing vocals yeah. and beat are really chaotic and interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's got some funny lines, and it's got... A, a skit at the end of it which any of the songs that have a skit at the end of them kind Isn't of bump. all of them <laughs> most of them do i think it's one or two of them, yeah. them doesn't if i remember yeah. correctly uh any yeah, of them right. if they got a skit at the end it immediately help, makes it a little more interesting to me uh pot holders <laughs> uh it just had some fun lines in it and it had a really cool beat to it that like i res- i like the beat on that one uh deep fried friends yeah, uh, it's got like a more classic message, I guess, if you want to call it that, mm-hmm. about like it's your got friends. A very 90s beat too. Yeah, it's got an old older beat and the message of let like you don't know who your friends are, especially once you start getting money and stuff like that. You yeah. find out really who cares about you and that kind of stuff. Yeah, and those are all next to each other on the album too, which is they were quality. Yeah. And uh, I did, I do have an honorable mention for cookies. Mm. Just throwing that out yeah honorable mention yeah. for that one it was interesting too <laughs> yeah i'll mention i'll mention this now the version of cookies that is now readily available is not the original version mm. um there was a very prominent cookie monster sample throughout the song um on original release <laughs> nice and obviously it wasn't clear he didn't pay for it and says oh. Street is not trying to be on a song about masturbating <laughs> yeah um, why not so <laughs> that's the very first thing i put in my notes is it starts so, with jerking off <laughs> yeah like... the whole song is about masturbating um but it's it's really funny uh his you can find it on youtube uh the version with cookie monster and it's just, I mean, it's mostly just him saying cookies like, throughout the throughout the song. Okay. Um, but it's, it, it, works, it works really well. And uh, it's it's funny. It's worth mentioning, I thought. That so, does yeah. help make it a little more sense with the title, I will say. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, even in the song, uh, so many of the lyrics are just cookie brands. Like, mm-hmm. he's just, like, listing off cookies, basically. Fair enough. Yeah. But, yeah, and those are my... about how he likes to eat them, different, the different ways of how he eats them. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but those are my 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 top songs. Um, cool. More so or less in my, order. I'll do my top. 
uh, mine are in no particular order, which I think is a first for me. I usually do a particular order for everything. Yeah. I'm very particular. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you do. Um, but I really couldn't decide. Um, and I actually have, well, I have three, but I, I do have an honorable No, mention, you have so, four. No, I, you no, have, I have four. three. Um, so, uh, Beef Rap, great song. Really, really fucking amazing song. He goes really hard. Just in, so uh, I, the first couple of bars and it are so good talking about like arteries and shit. Yeah. <laughs> and how you don't change your diet, you're going to die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Ho Cakes. Also a great song right after that. Um, yep. I just really love how all the rhymes flow into them just saying super. Yeah. <laughs> it's so good. so good. I will say it's that like, part was cool. It so well. It's like, yeah. that was like, that song was the, when I was going through my first listen, I was like, man, I was like, that was my standout favorite song actually was Ho Cakes. I was like, damn, that's a really fucking good song. It's so catchy. Yeah. It's dope. Yeah. Um, and then uh, also Guinness's. Uh, the feature is so fucking good. Uh, I don't wow. know what, who is she. Her name uh, it's Four Eyes and I think Star like with a bunch of H's. They're they're, it? they're it's, weird names. No Angelica. Uh, it's Angelica and Four Eyes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, just amazing. Uh, so good. Like what a great song. I re- wow. really really loved it. Doom's um, not on that really song at all. I really yeah, loved that's... the chorus as well. Like the the uh, like the war metaphor mm-hmm. with like war talking wounds. about love. Yeah. 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 Um, and then, uh, honorable mention, which I wanted to fit in my top three as well, basically is in basically top four, uh, rap snitch knishes, um, great track, super, super catchy, probably is the catchiest track on the album. Um, and it looks like it's like the most listened by far. Um, I also forgot to mention at the top, I have heard that song before rap snitch. Knishes. Oh yeah. 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 I've, I've is heard that because song. is it on his like top five on Spotify? Or probably something? because I think after I listened to Mad Villainy, I had like probably listened to like his top tracks. Like I did with I remember doing it with Mad Lib, and then I went into like loop pack and stuff with Mad Lib and, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. going down different rabbit holes. <laughs> yeah, I mean Mad Lib um, has maybe the deepest rabbit hole of all time, so it's easy to get lost there. Yeah, that was when I was diving in. Um, but I didn't remember doing it with Doom, but I did. I, I had listened to that song before. But yeah, it was tough to to think of fave songs. Uh, it's a really, really solid altogether album, honestly. Yeah. So I'll touch on a few things that you guys just mentioned before I uh, get into mine. Um, Guinness's is the song I was going to say is my weak song. Oh! Only because, but only because Doom isn't on it. I still think it's very good for what it is, and the beat is phenomenal. They're so good, um, though. They're, they're fantastic. They are, so good. They are really good. They're fantastic. Yeah, I don't want to take anything away from it, but I, if I had to choose a weakest song, it would be that one just because Doom isn't rapping on it, and the beat is so good that I want to hear him rapping on it. However, I agree that Angelica and Four Eyes are phenomenal, and the chorus is great, and she has like three really great verses, um, so that's, that's really funny. Uh, and I had something to touch on with Trev, and I've forgotten it now. So, um, oh, one beer is one of the only beats not produced by Doom on the album. It is a Mad Lib beat. Um, okay. Why isn't he featured? What the fuck, Spotify? Uh, yeah, I know. Well, he produced it. He wasn't on it, so they don't really credit producers very much. Spotify. I feel like they do like sometimes. That. Do they not? I don't know. No, only if they're featured. And yeah. that's worth mentioning. Uh, Mad Lib just dropped a new album last week called Sound Ancestors. It's his first, like, solo, just instrumental album in quite a while. Um, nice. It is very, very good. The only other thing I've listened to this week besides M Food is Sound Ancestors. Uh, it's phenomenal and definitely worth checking out. Um, cool. So, my top three, um, I think when I <clears throat> first listened to this album and first found out about this album and uh you know throughout it it has strong ninth and tenth grade high school energy to me my favorites were Ho cakes one beer and deep fried friends um all phenomenal tracks however my top three now uh number one is potholders i was very happy to hear you say that trev that song fucking slaps. I was so uh, afraid of, that my top three no, were going to be nobody no, else's because no. Jacob didn't say no. any of mine. So I was like, Pot oh. is phenomenal. <laughs> I love it. Um, I love, well, we can talk about it more when we talk track a little bit track by track, but it's great. Uh, shout out to Count Basty. He's one of the only featured people on this album, and he's got a great verse on there. Um, and then Con Carney and Vomit Spit are my two and my mm. three. I can't. 
I wanted to put Con Carney on. Them. I wanted okay. to put Con Carney on mine as well. Con Carney, I think, is the purest distillation of Doom that's available on this album, at least just from a pure rapping standpoint. He doesn't have any hooks. There's no skits. It's just two minutes of him rapping his ass Very off good. on that song. There's a, uh, there's and a that, skit at the end of that one, isn't there? Okay, sorry. At this, at this. At oh the no, end, never mind. I was looking at Con Queso. Ignore me. Okay, cool. Sorry. Uh, it's really good. The beat is great. It's got a great shot A sample on it. Um, that has the one uh, part of a song that I will quote in depth once we get to it. I that's my one. I'm holding myself to it, but I wrote it down because it's just like absurd. Hit us. With um, uh, I can do it right now. Yeah, sure. Sweet. In the in the beginning, um, he's just like talking about some random shit. And then all of a sudden he goes into like a relatively detailed way to steal a car. Um, <laughs> and he, so what I'm about to say starts in the middle of a bar. So like he's talking about something and then he says, buy a plate, right? So it starts with buy a plate. So buy a plate, isolate the wires, try the straight pliers. If not the vice grips, a real price saver way to acquire nice whips. What a steal for real <laughs> on wheels of steel stunner a funner summer number one meal deal bummer uh just like the rap the cadence of that is outrageous um and it's great because you start and you're thinking buy a plate like he's talking about food and then all of a sudden he's talking about no it's a license plate so you can steal this car and slap a a a fake license plate on it um yeah that that whole song is littered with stuff and i if i didn't have the precedence of uh, two hours of quoting Mad Villainy lyrics, I would probably quote this entire song front to back. Um, it's incredible. I love the beat. Uh, just phenomenal. And then Vomit Spit uh, starts off with maybe the best starting line on the album. It, I think it rivals Beef Rap. Uh, the, it's the beat he hears in his sleep sometimes. Um, just that line itself has lived with me forever um, and is very relatable. So cool great top threes trev what's the song that you hate you guys are gonna hate oh me. god is it con carney or vomit spit no it's ho cakes <laughs> why really is it the beatbox it's i guess like that hard beat that goes throughout almost the whole thing it's that so boom. good i loved it i i couldn't stand that bit that the part like every oh, like it. as part of the beat i just i really liked the super uh sample that was cool super. <laughs> that yeah. was cool, but I couldn't get over that hard like buzz. Boom, oh, bit, I thought boom, the beat was so boom, tight. Bit. Yeah, it, I, <laughs> like, I guess if like that was like not so aggressive, maybe I wouldn't have no, thought it about it as much. Aggressive, but like, I don't know. Part of it just like it was I just like that. Though. Just sounds it sounds bad to me, and I didn't like it. I actively <laughs> disliked that. Like. Fair. That's fair. I, I'm I'm sorry. Like especially whenever I saw it on like you don't uh, have to apologize. You do. Jacob's top list. I was like, oh no, what have I done? Yeah. But I mean, that song definitely slaps like crazy. Yeah. But I mean, you know. you're not gonna like to hear this then, dude. When I say what my least favorite was, uh, it was Deep Fried Friends. Um, fair enough. I didn't. I just did, wasn't into the the like '90s like R&B beat. I uh, just wasn't feeling it at the time. Man, I don't. I don't so think good. it's. I don't think it's a bad beat. I just f- feel like I wasn't in the mood for it, and I didn't. Interesting. Want it. it was so different than the rest of the beats. I like didn't want to hear it. <laughs> that's fair. That's really interesting because I feel like that's one of the most immediate songs on the album. Like it can get you right away. And also, I. Uh, I but made the a note skit of this. on that song is fantastic. At the end, I want to say. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. I made a note to mention um, when talking about the album in general, I think this album is a lot more personal than Mad Villainy was. Like, you actually kind of get a sense of who Doom is and what he values. Yeah. Um, whereas Mad Villainy, it's all just, like, wrapping through clouds and clouds of smoke, right? Like, I think is how I described it. Um, this one has a lot of intimacy to it. Uh, I think Deep Fried Friends it feels like it was sparked by maybe a friend betraying him or something like that. Yeah. It's about like Trev mentioned fake friends and, um, you know, Figuring he, like, out reads who the definition. you can trust and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. He like reads the definition of a friend, like out of the dictionary and then like raps about that definition. Uh, yeah. and I also, I feel like I that's such that... like a classic thing for rappers to rap about though. Like when it is like after they've like dropped an album or two, 
talk mm-hmm. about like people that were friends betraying them or like family betraying them after they have like yeah. money and shit like that like i can think of like 45 kanye songs that have about the same thing yeah. <laughs> i mean drake that's, made his entire career off of that's that, true so. you mean <laughs> honestly that not was a, my not first a drake note fan, though so i wouldn't really know any of the songs He's my very first, my very first note on Deep Fried Friends is like a classic message about who your real friends are. Like that's yeah, it's it's classic. Mm-hmm. It's not even just for rap. That's just a classic message for. I feel like a lot of music. It's just like, hey, I'm successful now, and suddenly the people who I thought were good friends turned out to be assholes. Yeah, yeah. the moment um, money gets involved, it's like, ugh. There's a lot of really good uh, lines on that one. One of the ones that always sticks out to me. Um, it's something about codependence and co-defendants, and usually they'll end up telling for a lower sentence. Um, Damn. He just, like... That's true. <laughs> it's so good. And also, a thing that has never occurred to me before, um, the name, the title, Deep Fried Friends, Deep Fried Things are generally bad for you. And in this one, he's talking about bad friends, which I yeah. thought was pretty cool. That um, makes sense, n- yeah. Never thought about that in the 15 years I've listened to this album. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But can we talk yeah. about how poo poo uh, how poo putt platter has the fattest beat on the album? Yeah, it's just so the good. absolute fucking fattest. It's beat. so <laughs> it's so good. The beat on that one and um, Phileo rapper I think are both really like. Really I good. feel like I'll listen to those uh, skit tracks. Yeah, I'll like go back to those tracks just because I want that beat. Is that the one with like the drunken the drunken drums and piano? It's like don't 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 yeah yeah that one yeah yeah that's the sample audio. I feel like that's gonna be like a riot for me. Like when I go back to the just the last track of just an instrumental on a rap album, I just I just fucking love a good instrumental. Yeah, there is. Sorry, Trevor, I didn't mean that. No, it's okay. The the sample that he pulls for all of those ones about that guy who's like cooking or something like the like yeah. survivalist guy or I whatever shipped a lot out here in the woods that guy's yeah. voice is ridiculous <laughs> it's yeah. ridiculous and i loved it i loved every second of that guy being on here i was like hey yeah, what too. that dude that weird dude talking about yeah. how he's big and strong because all the stuff he's eating <laughs> yeah. when he eats too yeah. much he has a fig leaf bicarbonate yeah to it's a clear um, him right out it's <laughs> uh it's from a, a show, I think. It was like a kid's show in the 80s. It's a guy named like Ewell Gibson or Ewell Simpson yeah, or something I, like that. I will say I did go on, uh, what is it, Lyric Genius or whatever the hell that website's Rap called. Rap Genius? Yeah, Rap Genius. Rap Genius where they like break down. I didn't go all nice. of the songs, all the lyrics because I wanted to make my own assumptions. But a mm. couple of things like the Spider-Man and the Fantastic Four skits, I really needed to know where exactly those came from. Yeah, I didn't I know like, where they came from. Yeah, I, I I needed to know, and it made a lot more sense once I looked it up, looked them up. I was like, okay, yeah, that makes a lot more sense about the the quality and the what they're talking about and stuff like that. It's mm-hmm. like, okay, cool. Yeah. But that segues uh, pretty well into a thing I wanted to do briefly um, for beef rap because there's like such an extended intro on that song. I was curious to see what all the samples were. Um, so I did something similar with Milo where for the first track on the album, I like pulled out the things that he referenced, um, just to give an idea of how dense the album is. So on the first track, Beef Rap Alone, the skits are pulled from the 1983 movie Wild Style, the 1942 movie Bowery at Midnight, the 1976 movie Logan's Run, the 1970 kids show The Electric Company, and a 1982 episode of Spider-Man called Canon of Doom. And that's, uh, um, you know, obviously where all the Dr. Doom clips come from for this yeah. song in particular. And mm. it also includes the sample that the beat is made from. Mm. Um, uh, yeah. And then he has the line on this one. And Cobb may have some written down too. But one of the ones that I like you know, as a 16 year old had as my Facebook status for the longest was, uh, he wears a mask just to cover the raw flesh, a rather ugly brother with flows. That's gorgeous. Uh, I just think that's such a timeless, beautiful line. Um, uh, yeah. I mean, do you guys have any thoughts about that, that song in particular? Um, is that the song where they talks about him? Oh, he's gone. I, Cause I need input from. from Will. <laughs> <laughs> is that the song where he talks about Doom being in uh, Long Island? 
Oh man, I don't know. The skits really blur together for me. They do for uh, me it's too. Hard, <laughs> it's hard to know where it comes. I think because the Long Island one's kind this of is, a running. This is skit. the one like, from. Well, I'm talking times. about the first one where it's like the businessman talking about how he's not going to let any blasted uh, government that's, bureaucrat uh, tell him how to run it. That's his... in the middle. J. Jonah Jameson, by the way, just going to point that out huh? real quick. That's amazing. <laughs> At least that's what the thing that I looked up said. That's who was saying that. It was J. Jonah yeah, Jameson like, pulled him Doom in. Doom will be my guest. I just my, loved like, I loved that skit. It's so funny. Yeah, <laughs> it's so good. Uh, there's so many good clips like the, the you're weird. Yeah. Like, yeah. Good. That I like I say that in my everyday life and no one knows what I'm talking about because it's like a two second clip from a Doom album. But yeah, um, my thought yeah. on the first song is it really does set up the rest of the album really well i feel like Mm -hmm. like the the food theme obvious of course that's the name and stuff like that but also yeah every song i think (laughs) yeah every song absolutely has the food theme but also it's just vomit spit technically not it's about vomit not the actual food Eh, (laughs) i think that's technically related i would say that it is it is that's a tech that's a technicality but it's It's adjacent for sure yeah food adjacent uh, but like it sets up the whole thing with the food themes, all the clips. It also has, I don't know if you noticed the um, food. We need food clip. Yeah, that sample was also on the last song at the very end. Like it was the mm. last cl- um, sample that we had for the whole album. Oh no, I didn't so, notice that. No, I don't remember if it was at the very beginning of this song. Yeah, but I know that it's somewhere in the in this first song and then he finishes the whole album with that same sample which i really that's kind of nice i it really appreciated that around. i was like cool all right nice trevor what was your favorite skit do you think probably the one talking about um like at the end of i can't remember which song where they actually really go into some of doom like the, the backstory cartoon the character. lore doom the lore of doom oh with, yeah um, i liked that one too that was that, those are my two favorites the long island one and the lore doom <laughs> lore, like because the lore doom is kind of broken up honestly into two halves yeah um uh, which is before our big i guess break if you want to call that in the middle uh-huh. where he goes yeah. into the the fig leaf bicarbonate and the what is it gumbo and poo poo platter and stuff like yeah. that poo putt well, platter. platter is starts it out yeah so like he has like the um, origin, like of Doom burning his face. That's the one his... that I like, where he burns his face and then goes out into the forest trying to figure it out. Well, he goes out into like I think he goes like throughout like um, like eight like Middle Eastern Asian villages and stuff Somewhere. like that. Yeah, like Tibet and all that kind of stuff. Trying, trying to, find... to find some sort of medicine doctor. Yeah, and then it brings it back around to after our big break of all the like other skits talking about him putting on the invulnerable armor and yeah. like the mask and stuff which realistically like if we want to talk about this real quick in the cartoons and the comics and stuff doom's mask is a part of his face because is that true will he he whenever he forges the mask <laughs> is that true with mf doom i mean will <laughs> oh yeah no he can't take it off That's yeah true. whenever he because his face is already disfigured from experiments and stuff <laughs> he um it's so crazy. when he when he makes the mask he puts it on before it is cooled so it's like uh. glowing red hot and he just puts it on his own face like he's got I, I, in different variations i think he has like servants and stuff that are there with him like helping him for, like with the mask and they're like no it's it's too hot and he's just like Psh, and just gets it on there that's his new face now it's just Fuck. fused to his face forever this uh, um they talk kinda, about that a lot more in his first album operation doomsday which is much more focused skit wise on the lore of dr doom oh really um yeah 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 so that one is very similar in terms of how many skits there are but they are all strictly dr doom skits um, okay and there's a there's much more storytelling on that one and uh I mean, again, I don't think you would love it, but it might be worth listening to just once just to hear how he ties it together um, because he, okay. he uses a lot of that as, like, his origin story. Um, would you bring that one, possibly, or not? I mean, I would love to. I, I don't necessarily want to uh, bring three albums by him, although I would, I mean, for me, I would love that, you know. I'll hold off. 
okay. on doing it. And then, okay. you know what? Who knows? Maybe in the future, yeah. right? Like, I mean, shit. I would literally bring it next time. <laughs> That's, <laughs> Dude, I mean, you know, I, it's we, so good. Um, do whatever you want. Who cares? Like, yeah, this is true. This is true. Who I'm bringing, I'm our, bringing anime. It's our podcast. Yeah, I'm bringing anime like almost every week. Or every week it's my turn. Like, yeah. That's I'm doing fair. whatever. I don't care. Like we're just yeah. <laughs> like, it's uh, I I it's not as good as these two for me. But um, if it's not something that's like favorite of yours, that's kind of the whole point of this. Is we want well, to bring no, stuff I mean, that we love. It. I do love it. I absolutely. Okay. Love it. I don't think it's a ten. I think it's maybe a nine and a half. But um, that's fair enough. I've brought stuff that I thought was like what an eight. Didn't I bring something I read did an yeah. eight myself? Yeah, like, yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, maybe I will bring it at, at some point. Maybe not right away, but. Uh, it is really fun. And I might yeah, rate it higher just because I'm like, yeah, here we go, more comic the lore, shit. The lore, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's really dope. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's there's hit Doom's story himself, like that the rapper, not the character, is is very similar to the Doctor Doom thing. I mean, he had a group with his brother. I didn't really touch on this at all in the first time we spoke about him um, with Mad Villainy, but he had kind of a very similar thing where he was in a group with his brother um, called KMD in the early 90s, and they were like kind of adjacent to a tribe called Quest and the whole Native Tongues movement. Oh, sweet. Um, and then his brother got killed. Um, he got hit by a car on an expressway in Manhattan. Damn. And then the second kmd album got dropped by the label and shelved permanently uh kind of like right as they were their career was about to take off both those things happened and so doom just kind of like vanished um he wasn't doom at the time he was he went by zev love x uh was his rap name and then like in the late 90s he just like came out of nowhere with operation doomsday and um, a lot of the themes about Dr. Doom, the character, are relatable to him, you know, about being betrayed by the industry and having to come back as kind of a villain to make music on his own terms. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's a ton of stuff that you can read about about him and his career. Obviously, the pieces were flowing in early January, given his death. You know, a lot of really incredible writers took time to to write long articles about him and his impact on hip hop as a whole. But uh yeah, so the Operation Doomsday I think would be would be fun to bring at some point. Um just given Yeah the lore of the Doom character, both for the rapper and for the actual character himself. Have you found any other um rappers that have done similar things or or try to do similar vibes or themes as uh, that MF Doom does? No, he's the he's he's singular in that, and I mean that's probably biased in that there may be people that try and in my opinion fail, so they completely fall off my radar. Yeah, but I I don't think that there's anybody who comes close to MF Doom in terms of pure technical ability, plus the quality of music that he makes, plus like general mystique and aura. Like I think that those things yeah. are really tough to do. Uh, and I think that he's so successful in doing them that it's just like he's unmatched. I mean, he's, you know, just an an absolutely tremendous artist. Um, I mean, like hearing and, his backstory, like you're saying, like, yeah, he has a lot more in common with Doom than I ever thought. Yeah, so that's yeah. really awesome, actually. Yeah. And also his son died when he was oh. his son was 14. He died like four or five years ago. And, oh, gosh. Um, and Doom uh, was born in England, uh, came to New York as a kid, grew up in New York, went on a European tour in 2010, and then was denied re-entry into the United States in 2010. So never came home. He lived in England for the last 10 years of his life. Oh, shit. Um, was never Why was allowed he re-entry into the United States. He never became a naturalized citizen, I guess. Um, but... What? His visa was denied uh, kind of repeatedly, and he never was able to return to his home um, for the last 10 years of his life, which is kind of, you know, he is an elusive and kind of mysterious guy by default, but I think that just kind of added to it. Like, he's... Yeah. Even Madlib, who worked very closely with him, didn't know that he was dead until his wife posted on Instagram. That's crazy. Like, <laughs> like no one no insane. one knew besides his family until two months after the fact that he died. Um, so... 
I mean, you know, he was already a legendary guy, and then to have something like that happen, it's just like the the enigma of of Doom is just it's astounding, and I, I it's it will never be replicated by anything wow. or anyone. Uh, and I'm <laughs> very close to crying, so I'm gonna let y'all <laughs> talk about a, a song. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's an incredible guy, and it's it's just absolutely fucking brutal that he died. Uh, absolutely fucking brutal. Should we take a, a, like a light heart moment to be like, I got a new beer. I got, yeah, let's talk about it. Grab. I got a strawberry twister turbine. Ooh, it's got a nice, nice turbine. It's a thick boy. I was not expecting that. It's a uh, American sour ale with strawberry it's lemon. Viscous? It's very viscous. Like damn. It's that sounds clo- crazy. It's close to a that smoothie. Shit is thick. It's close to a smoothie sour. Honestly, I've, I've, it didn't say it smoothie good. on it, but it definitely feels closer to a smoothie sour than not. So it's good though. It's sweet. It's nice. It, it looks delicious. Will, why so, do you uh, why do you think that um, Donald Trump likes ASAP Rocky better than uh, MF Doom? Why did he not bring MF Doom home? I think Donald Trump isn't smart enough to know who MF Doom is, um, <laughs> and also even if he did know who he was, he's not smart enough to understand how incredible of an artist he is. You think Doom so, would have casted like mind control on him though? I know, he's right? Pretty, he's I pretty, mean, like, Trump is pretty wasted dumb opportunity. Of a guy. <laughs> yeah, he's able to control him pretty easily. Dumber than fucking rocks. Sorry, um, I thought I had to bring up the ASAP Rocky thing. <laughs> yeah, that shit is ridiculous. I think it's just because he knows Rocky is popular and he thought that getting him out of Sweden would give him points with black people, which it clearly. Didn't he didn't. get, uh, who was it? Lil Pump? Did, is that who uh, also endorsed yeah. him? Yeah, mm-hmm. and Lil Wayne. <laughs> God. Yeah. Three rappers I don't listen to. <laughs> yeah. Well, Lil Wayne, um, in my and I mean now completely has become irrelevant to me. But he Wayne had a similar run to Doom in terms of like project after project consistency for like all the Carter I was, one. Wait, I would, that's not the Carter. What is it? It was between the Carter two and Carter three. He dropped like a run of mixtapes that were just like unimpeachably excellent. Uh, dedication to the drought is over. Uh, three and four, I think. Yeah, I've just never liked his voice, so I can't listen to him. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> um, those are those are some really incredible stuff. Uh, but yeah, he's been irrelevant since No Ceilings to me, which came out my freshman year of college. So it's been a while. Anyway, um, also, so we talked before, about, but right before we get off the Lil Wayne topic, yeah, uh, when when I was uh, in like probably middle school or high school, on my sister's iPod, she had a cover of Lollipop by some like pop punk band that was a good cover <laughs> <laughs> i wonder if that's the cover that drove oh him into like doing his like rap rock stuff uh he was Maybe. like damn this shit sounds so good rock this shit's fire guitar. <laughs> it's some fucking like skinny that's amazing. Uh, like white guy with weird hair singing about like a girl wanting to lick his lollipop <laughs> that's <laughs> incredible uh We'll throw that up on the Instagram. Uh, That'd for be all tight. You guys. I definitely can find it. <laughs> um, so we talked a bit about beef rap. Uh, what other songs stand out to y'all that we want to touch on? I just want uh, to talk on potholders a little bit yeah, about me too. The one line that really stood out to me. Yeah. Uh, the rappers like crabs in a barrel. I think it was the line. Something along those. Mm-hmm. It's the crab bucket. I love. Yeah. I love it when people reference the crab bucket. <laughs> it's. <laughs> <laughs> it's such i feel like at least in the circles i run in, it's like a, a meme like an internet meme like at this point like you know people pulling themselves like pulling each other down nobody helping each other like they're always constantly yeah. pulling each other down but i just yeah. i don't know i really liked that line it was a cool line and it made a yeah, lot of also, sense it also references uh old bay which is a, a goat seasoning that uh, is MC's true is, that, that is, is mc uses crabs seasoning. in a barrel past every, the old bay yeah every time we do Very a low good. country boil over here it's always got old bay in it so gotta have old bay that gotta i gotta have old bay. uh didn't know old bay until college i went to college of virginia and all my friends from southern virginia lived and died by old bay shout out to brandon thompson old bay um, is the out. goat man it yeah is. old bay is it's phenomenal uh great on eggs too by the way um, really never tried that very good me neither yeah yeah, yeah uh potholders like i think the beat is so deceptively complex um, it's really cool i like there's the beat on this one. there's like multiple guitars there's a piano that kind of sounds like a guitar um and then the the mo hot shit vocal drop that comes through throughout the song mm-hmm. i just love 
Uh, I think that's one of the best like car songs on the album. That thing really knocks in a car. Um, and uh, I just like don't forget your potholders. Just like a great. <laughs> it's just a great. It's line. true. It's also um, a good bit of life advice. You know, you'll burn yeah. your hands. Don't forget yeah, your potholders. And he's he's talking about smoking weed and getting burned by the roach. Um, he's like, don't forget your potholders. You like won't burn your fingers. Um, take it from the fireside. You won't get blistered. You know, he just. They're just smoking weed, uh, but can we talk about how about food? I just you know it's so endlessly creative. This whole can, album. Can we talk about how when you said that for some reason the image that came to mind was, you know those like rubber cow like face pot holders, mm-hmm. just somebody with one of those holding a joint. <laughs> all yeah. with it. You gotta be safe. <laughs> that's gotta what came safe, to man. when you said that. That's the first image that came to my mind, and I don't know why. Roaches but... will get you, dude. Can't get yeah, that by that's the true. Bridge can't do it um the only thing i wrote is that pot holders is also a dope track and then i wrote count uh count base d is a great feature smooth flow and great voice yeah such a good voice he's a um he's a producer who's made a lot of beats for snoop dogg uh and when during snoop dogg's like kind of like g-funk phase uh the the g-funk era very like dr dre chronic era type stuff he loves like just funk uh, he also has an, an immaculate perm. He's got like the straight, nice. straight hair. Um, yeah, Count Basie is great. He's a good follow on Instagram too. He's really funny. Um, yeah, he's my favorite guest first on the album for sure. Although Mr. Fantastic on Rap Snitch Knishes is really good too. That was really I, uh, good. that's a that's a great track. That guitar shredding beat is like so yeah, good. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, very like eighties. I mean, he well no Tears for Fears. Tears for Fears is a band, right? Aren't they from like the eighties? Um, who tears <laughs> tears for fears he mentions them he name drops them on the track i think they have a song that i really I've love. heard that name for sure yeah tears for fears. tears for fears yeah they're a pop band from the 80s they have a song in... what's their big one do they have a big song uh head over heels is the one that i know um yes. i think it's in donnie darko maybe which i haven't seen but i've Me seen the clips on youtube of it being used in donnie darko uh Head Over Heels is an absolute fucking jam, though. Really creepy music video where he's like trying to hit on a librarian. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the, he mentions everybody trying to rule rule the world like Tears for Fears uh, on Rap Snitch Knishes. But that's a great one too because it's talking about how rappers like tell on themselves by talking about crimes they committed in their music. Um, Rap Snitches telling all their business. Yeah, that was kind of and be their own star witness. You know, I think again, like this is like a tangible thing that he's talking about. Whereas on Mad Villainy, it's all so abstract. Um, uh, I just want to say the head over heels that I thought of when you said that is by <laughs> Switchfoot uh, on the album no. Oh Gravity. <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> I was like, where have I heard that name before? I was like, it's definitely not that '80s band. No, it's pop punk. It's uh, <laughs> Switchfoot. What was their big song? They had a banger in the early two thousands for sure. Head over heels was one of them, wasn't it? Well, maybe Switchfoot. I just don't recognize the name, and I know the song. Uh... Switchfoot had some. They had Switch, at least Switchfoot's one. Switchfoot's fucking classic. Oh man, I went to their banner and Spotify. And they look old. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, <laughs> gonna get out of that real quick. I definitely had some Switchfoot. I had like Rio Blue. 256 megabyte mp3 player in like That's sixth tight. grade that i had um 256 megs holy shit shit was huge at the time i could say like 40 sh- songs on that thing oh <laughs> damn and you were choosy with that i was hella choosy man you had to be i had uh i'm blue daba dee daba die oh, I had, oh my god um, classic what's the what's the big fuck oh See, that's the type of shit so much that I evanescence had on hit clips brother yeah, you remember yeah, hit yeah, clips? Yeah. Hit clips are crazy. Riss and I were just talking about them the other day. You listen what to like what seven is that? seconds of a what song. What is that? You don't remember it was hit like, clips? I never, crazy. dude. I've never been. I hate to say, like, I've never really been that he didn't like into music. Yeah, into music. Uh, yeah, yeah. I didn't. I grew up in a world without so, sound. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it like was a, just a not movie about Trevor. <laughs> thing that <laughs> I. It's was, a silent movie. <laughs> i just not something i was into i was not a big music boy like i don't know i grew up in a world without sound sounds like a clip from a movie trailer about a sad boy Um, a deaf sad boy is trevor anyway hit clips were like little plastic um 
keychains that you could put into a I'm pretty sure sold separately jukebox yeah, that was also it was like very a little small. Jukebox that's also a keychain. And it was like essentially a USB stick or like an SD card yeah. that held like seven seconds of a song. And I think it was like, more than that. I think it was like 30, 30 seconds, but it was not pop the full it, song. <laughs> you could pop it into like this little blue box and it would just like play the chorus on this tinny little bullshit ass speaker. The um, point was that we were kids and that's all we could get. <laughs> and you could have Hold songs on, I on gotta, your keychain. You got to look it up. Yeah. I got to look this up. Hold they on. They were really Hit. tight. They were honestly some Hit of the tightest Hit clips with a Z. Hit clips yeah. with a Z. Uh, what? What is this yeah, little uh, thing? That's what it was. That's it's a little boom box. Yeah, those are like little SD cards. Yeah. yeah. That, they I were had I'm seeing it. And then we had, we had an actual boom box that stayed at the house, you know, but this is on the go. <laughs> yeah. The one I'm, I mean, oh, man. I'm, you're not Radio I'm Raheem. Out you can't walk around with a boom box on your shoulder. Exactly. You know? Shout out Radio Raheem, dude. That's, Big, that's the that's one I'm looking play. at. <laughs> the one I'm looking at has got Backstreet Boys, Larger Than Life. Yep. It's got NSYNC, Bye Bye Bye. Baja Men. I can't tell what song. Who it's let the well, dogs out? It's what the definitely fuck? who let the dogs out. Of course, it's who let the dogs out. What am I <laughs> saying? Of course, I can't tell what song it is. It they don't, they song. made There's an so album and it was just who let the dogs Brit- out ten times in a row. What you <laughs> Britney Spears, stronger and what is what is that? Yeah, I mean every song you're saying Stronger's right now is a banger. Backstreet Boys, Stronger the call. This is like a, an image off of Reddit of someone with their little tiny little tiny boombox. It They're so like small. check out my hip clips. Also invest in GameStop. <laughs> Oh, it's a cat! Look at Maestro. <laughs> Maestro's first Pip video left. appearance. It is Maestro's first video. Oh, Pip's Pip's just, sleeping over by Abby. It. Piper's hanging out with the parents, so whatever. Yeah. But Pip yeah, jumped down so great, immediately dude. when Abby. Dude, I, how have I never heard of these things before? Wait, what was what were your guys' first MP3 players? Uh, I had iPod an Touch. iPod Nano was my first one. I had an iPod Touch second generation. Was uh, the first iPod I used though was my sister's iPod Video. That was like it was like the classic iPod looking thing, but it was the yeah. fifth generation of that. It was dope. That um, shit held thirty two gigs. I think see. was on it. Fucking fire! Yeah. I'll show you guys yeah, my I, first. I had the well, Nano. It was that first tall, iPod, that tall skinny thing. Also... Dude, I have my iPod. I forgot it's in my desk drawer. That's here it is. <laughs> this oh my, is my original iPod, iPod Touch. I for- totally forgot I had it. <laughs> That's incredible. It's uh, just full amazing. Of I wonder full if of I can even find. I wonder if my Nano's around somewhere. It's probably somewhere in this room. There's yeah, so much garbage go. in here. So this was my first MP3 player. What the fuck am I looking at? Is that is that That's from a, a, a fucking... A is that from the Who Let the Dogs Out music video? <laughs> Wait a minute. So I said... What did I say before? 256 megabytes? Yeah. Uh, it was 64 megabytes. Ah, um, nice. Even more clutch. This thing was the coolest shit in the world. I had it in sixth grade, and I thought I was the absolute fucking bee's knees. I mean, were it you? Held, it held 20 songs. I definitely was not. Um... It held 20 songs. You could put them on shuffle. It was durable <laughs> as hell. You could fucking slap that thing on the floor. I did have a see. Walkman. Uh, or no, uh, the Discman. Or no, it was a little, like the like little CD, CD player. The little portable CD player. Yeah, yeah I had one of had, those. Yeah, I had a CD player too. Used to listen to like, uh, now that's what I call music on it. And like my chemical romance <laughs> i don't yeah, even same. remember i had i think i had, I had backstreet boys at sync. if i'm honest i, I had the two. first now that's what i call music on cd me that's, too uh, dude i had the I'm i had from. the original as well we had all I, of them up the until goat. like 13 or something like that one two and three were the best ones dude, I had the three original. slapped can we talk Kids about bop. how much three slapped <laughs> yeah amazing did and you guys you said grab, three did you guys ever grab the kids kids bop absolutely not no get out of here we had kids bop we had kids bop growing up. Go, go tell it on the mountain, Trevor. It's uh, bad. This Don't is, get uh, me wrong. I'm aware how bad censored. it is now, but this was my. How do I get this shit to not be blown out as fuck? You have to yeah, let it closer, adjust closer to the brightness sure. of the phone itself. Yeah, yeah there you it goes. Can see it? Yeah. Play that was my brow. first iPod with the physical wheel, right? Oh I, no! I, it was a touch wheel. It was oh. a touch wheel. Yeah, and it was the first time they had touch buttons. Um. This thing was the absolute best. I had a hip, like a hip clip for it. Like it was like a, like a, 
Did like you wear it with your jorts? <laughs> you had a holster for your your iPod. Yeah, it was like a holster some sort of like iPod. dad. Yeah. You're like you a slid it in. Dad. Um, I mean, I was just put it away. The fucking guy with the iPod, bro. Just fucking, I was 11 years old, just vibing with my monochrome orange button iPod. That's tight, dude. Um. Did you guys have anything else it. to talk about uh, in the album? <laughs> we just diverged <laughs> deeply into different forms of old school listening to music. Not even old school. Yeah, old school not really. I, 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 I kind of covered it's everything old. I wanted to talk about. I think I did too. I mean, this album, it's kind of tough to talk about because it's so uh, individual and like yeah. unique. I think do, you should just listen to it. Do um, we need to talk about my Discover Weekly again like we did last time no, we talked about No, I do not need to hear it again. <laughs> Wait, has it ch- it's changed, hasn't it? I think we should. Oh, it would have changed. To be fair, I did listen to some of it actually this week. Just uh, give us the first 3 songs of it. Drunk by the Living Tombstone. It was bad. I listened to that. It was bad. Ignite by Jeff Williams and Cassie Lee Williams. That was okay. Uh, I know who those people are. Want It Here, Xena Pax, no idea what that is. Hmm. Panmaster Slash, uh, that's apparently like a game song remix. Interesting. Chipping In from Cyberpunk. I think this is more than three. Oh, you did say three. <laughs> so, my main thing <laughs> I wanted to, t- I wanted to talk about. <laughs> I knew about. you were. <laughs> main thing I wanted to bring up was how different my taste in music is. I had gotten to Celtic Punk recently. Oh, yeah, you were telling me about that, yeah. Celtic punk. It's Irish punk music, and honestly, I'm digging it a lot. I don't know. like uh, <laughs> shipping up to Boston by yeah. the... Uh, flogging that fucking no, Flogging is it, Mollies. Is it yeah, flogging, yeah Molly? flogging Mollies was definitely on the list of I song, doubted myself like, when I was starting to say it. <laughs> it's a great... Uh, just the, It's like the whole Departed soundtrack, right? That's yeah, just what you're, the what entire I guess, yeah. I don't know. I got, cause I, was, uh, I got on a kick. I sent you guys a Snapchat of it uh listening to the uh assassin's creed floor four sea shanties yeah or, that's or was that, that five Celtic punk no no, no but oh, it came up on shanties. the recommended below it on spotify oh yeah yeah Celtic Black punk. Punk, assassin's creed four i literally used to have that soundtrack on my phone and listen to it it's amazing Randy Dandy O is an amazing song, and I don't care who, like... Apparently, like, I guess, like, sea shanties are, like, popping on TikTok a, or something. Yeah, shit. that's why I started, but, like, not because of TikTok, that. but... I've, um, been on, I've been on the sea shanties since I played Black Flag back in, like, absolutely. six, seven, eight years ago. Uh, yeah. Lowlands Away is my favorite one. Um, well, okay. Yeah, that's a good one. I, I really like, um... Oh, God, I have to look. Randy Dandy O, and what was the other one that I really love? Cobb is into this conversation right now. I've never He's listened got a to play- Sea Shanty in my life, I don't think. Listen to Lowlands Away. I haven't played the game. <laughs> it doesn't oh, matter. Think- the song still stands on its own. That's true. Uh, I think it's, it's Fish in the Sea is the other one that I really like. Hmm. Or wait, are you talking about Unda Da Sea? <laughs> the fucking Little Mermaid song? Or are you talking no. about Other Fish by the Far Side? Yep, that's exactly you know, that's what I'm talking about. Other Fish in the Sea. Jacob, you gotta, you gotta play Assassin's Creed 4. It's really good. It's a great pirate game. It's definitely game. the best one. Well, I'll play it one of these days. It's yeah. not an Assassin's Creed game. It's a uh, it's a pirate game. It's a pirate game, and it's, and it's an the amazing best pirate Assassin's game. Creed. <laughs> I mean, now that my computer works and I can play games, though, I think I'm still doing GTA Five next because I just finished Red Dead Two to keep the, our audience. Kid just up to date. slapped Red Dead. Yeah, I also I just beat slapped it. Even it in like though a I started weeks. playing it the day it came out, I just beat it. This week. I'm this nine hours weekend. in. Yeah, because um, I'm done with Cyberpunk good. for now. I'm leaving it alone. For like a year, yeah. and then I'll yeah. come back to it. I'm Maybe. on a Hitman Three, and I, I'm back on a big PUBG kick at the moment. Um, still haven't gotten a solo or a duo come dub. On. Being what very the fuck, hard, Will? <laughs> dude. I got a solo tough, and then retired. <laughs> it's really tough. These kids on PS4 and Five are just nasty. They are I gotta play. They are you not get better than the PC dudes that <laughs> you get to the last like ten, and it's just all level five hundreds, like maxed out level. And I just like, I can't compete. I finished fourth. The Believe other day in yourself. Like five or six kills. I'm gonna get there. I have faith. You will get, get there. Yeah. Anyways, I guess this has been the podcast. <laughs> yeah. For so. Sure. Uh, Huge, huge, huge shout out MF Doom and his family. Uh, thank you for everything. 
Absolutely. Rest in eternal peace. Uh, yeah. I, I guess Trevor convinced me that I, I'll bring him back to the podcast with his first album. Um, I think Cobb might have missed that in the bathroom, but I'm going to bring Operation Doomsday at some point. Next. Um, you want me to do it next? <laughs> no, I think that's too much music for our audience. I think our audience. That's what is I said. Be that's what I said. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I, I never I, said I next, next, but I definitely think you should do it again because I will. Can, I will. I'll we can do back. whatever we want. You know, yeah. <laughs> fair, fair, that's fair. technically true. Um, yeah. So uh, thank you to Daniel Dumoulin, aka MF Doom, aka Victor Vaughn, aka King Ghidorah, aka nice. Metal Fingers, um, for everything uh a tremendous loss Absolutely. and happy i can at least show him to two people uh if not more um I, I, i'm sorry i don't like your music more but i did uh, i do appreciate what you did it's pretty fucked up no i think appreciation is all we need i think you you did good stuff i i'm sorry it's not my type of music <laughs> it's not apology not accepted incredible um all right cool uh, mf doom forever thank you all have a wonderful yeah. night Talk to you guys soon. Peace. Bye.